On today's episode, I'm gonna show you some things that I don't think you realize you can do with a volume pedal. The volume pedal is seen as this simple volume control device, but it holds within it magic. And today, we're gonna to do some magic. The volume pedal gets oversimplified. Yeah, it turns your guitar up or down, but guitar is all about volume and it's all about dynamics. So there are some really fascinating things you can do with placing a volume pedal in places and in situations you might not have thought of. So that's what I'm gonna to try to go over today. Uh, just a brief history is that volume pedals have been around for a while. We see stuff like the old DeArmond. Uh, somewhere in this room is a Vox volume pedal that they made back in the early 60s that plugged into their organs. So we probably see the evolution of putting your foot on a device to raise and lower volume coming from Hammond organs or Vox style organs. Uh, and then we see Fender releases these giant toaster sized volume pedals. I don't have one, but there's a picture there. And then Ernie Ball in the 70s releases the VP. This is the junior that most of you have seen and possibly own 400 of. Uh, this is obviously smaller because it's a junior, but this is what we think of, or at least what I think of with a perfected volume pedal. It's essentially a pot inside with a string around it. And as you pull it up and down, you're just turning the knobs. It's almost like turning the knob of your guitar. It's just at your feet. There are some other styles of this. We have things like the visual sound visual volume, which is really wild. It's a crazy feat of engineering. Um, you'd be amazed how hard it is to show with LED status where you are. You have over the top stuff like this Sonus that does volume effects as well as volume. And you don't have to use a string in a pot. You can use optical sensors or in the case of the Layla, it uses a magnetic sensor. So as the toe goes down, it gets closer to a magnet and that affects the circuit. And Ernie Ball also has fancier stuff like this one with the tuner. It reminds me of a certain product that I tried to do long ago. Let's jump right in though and demonstrate some things that I love to do with volume pedals that I hope you've never seen. First, we're gonna do a little trick that I love to do with the fuzz face. Any classic germanium or vintage style fuzz. This is a silicon. Uh, this is a BC 108 Jimi Hendrix edition. You can buy these new, really great sounding pedal. There's a video where I do a mod to this. You can go check it out if you're interested. But here's the magic of a fuzz face. You turn the fuzz knob all the way up and you use your guitar's volume knob to clean it up. Now, some of the best clean sounds in the world are rolling off your volume on your guitar with a fuzz face on and the fuzz maxed out. It's strange, it defies logic, but it's really awesome. It's a great tone. So one of the things here is that some guitars aren't as easy to move, like a Strat's pretty close. You can use your pinky or your ring finger, um, but Les Paul's 335s, just other guitars aren't that easy to manipulate. And how cool would it be to have a volume control like that at your foot? So what you do is you take a passive, uh, Ernie Ball is the one I like, but there's other passives. And that means there's no circuit in this. It's literally just a pot. And I know, listen, I've told you, Nick, how many times have I told him? Like 1,000. At least 1,000 times. Don't ever put anything in front of a vintage fuzz. I've said it. Uh, you're you're judging me. You're like, well, here he goes back on his word. I'm not going back on my word. This is passive. This essentially is just a guitar volume pot. So it's safe. And you want to put it before the fuzz and that fuzz knob maxed out. When your toe is down, you'll have full fuzz, just huge fuzz sounds, and then start to back it off, heel more and more down, and you'll start cleaning up. And there's some magical sweet spots where it's just like beautiful clean sounds and it's at your feet. So you can play guitar, eat a sandwich, play guitar, swell the fuzz. It's awesome. Check it out.
That was a good jam, really good. I used this Starlight, the new UAD pedal. I had it on the Tape Echo, which is an EP3 setting. It's amazing. That was the echo sound you heard there. I also wanna say a lot of drive pedals, especially discrete drives that use transistors or FETs, uh, so like my Superbolt or countless others, they'll do that same thing where they clean up at your feet. So you can have a volume pedal before your favorite drive and it'll kind of treat your uh, drive pedal like an amp by turning your volume down and cleaning it up. So that's cool. Uh, the next sound I wanna go through is using the basic, just mono, passive, Ernie Ball as an expression pedal. So a lot of times you buy pedals and they need expression outputs and you don't have an expression pedal and you don't wanna buy one because you're not sure if you even wanna use it. Well, let's take the Oceans 12. Uh, this is Electro Harmonics. It's just like a crazy reverb machine, tons of stuff, but it has a jack that says expression. What you can do is you can get you one of these splitter cables this has a tip ring and then on one end, um, a stereo cable. So you wanna plug in to that expression here, like such, and then you just take the tip ring and plug in and out. So what that's doing is connecting to both sides of that pot. And now your volume pedal that you've had that you might have fallen out of love with, we all fall out of love with our pedals. This might put you back in love. This could be good for the relationship. It's now an expression pedal. So I'm gonna have two sounds. I'm gonna set it up where I have a big old huge reverb sound here, and then it's gonna back off with a more natural kind of non reverb sound. So I can go in between them and uh, yeah, that's it. Also, if you like these jams, in the description below is a link. We have all of our jams now on BandLab. You can go over, right? They can go over and just, yeah. you can play along with our jams. It's awesome. And it's free. Go do to Band, it. do it, do the link, Band Lab, and play along with us. It's like Jam with JHS forever on every jam. Another really great, clever use of a volume pedal is to place it in the effects loop of an amp. So some amps have effects loop and it says send and return or effects in, effects out. Now what this is, is your amp has a preamp section that usually has your volume control, bass, mid, treble or whatever. And then there's an output section which drives your speakers and the output of the amp. Well, the effects loop goes right in the middle and a lot of people put delays and reverbs in there. I don't ever really do that because I don't care, but you can use that send return and simply place this in here. And when you have those nice, big, huge preamp saturated guitar sounds coming from your tube amp, it can get really loud. Um, you just put this in here and then you can start to back it off. It'll keep your level of distortion in place and it'll just lower how the amp sounds in the room. It, it'll, it won't kill you as much. I'll just 
Let's just demonstrate it here with an example situation. I'm plugging straight into my Softec MiG-50 and I'm just gonna turn it way up so those tubes distort. All natural tube distortion. Louder is more good. <laughs> Because my baby is sleeping. Your baby's here? I always bring my baby to work, Josh. Please turn it down. Oh, but if I turn it down, I'll lose that tube saturation from turning the amp up. No, you won't. Just put a volume pedal in the effects loop of your guitar head and then turn it down a little bit. So if I put a volume pedal in the effects loop of my amp, it keeps the tube saturation of the input tubes? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh wow, let's try that. It just happens to be hooked up. Ooh. Wow. That's much better. My baby will have a nap today. Look, he's already asleep. Why are we yelling? The last Example of using a volume pedal in one of my favorite ways and maybe a way you have not used is to do basic swells. Now this is popular in a lot of ambient music. Uh, it started early on when the volume pedal in the 70s was really put to work on pedal steel guitars, lap steels, and then it kind of evolved into Spanish electric kind of stuff that we play. Um, but a good example of this to me is Daniel Lanois, and I think of, you know, Sling Blade soundtrack or some of his other work. And you just have these ambient, washy parts. You have kind of faux pedal steel stuff that I can play on guitar because I don't play pedal steel. Um, and you just have a lot of echo. You have a lot of reverb. I'm going to use an RV6. I'm going to put it on a plate setting, a pretty big reverb setting. And then I'm going to use the starlight again, and I'm going to use the memory man setting. And so you'll just have a big decay sound, a big reverb echoey sound. And I will remove all the attack from my playing. And what that means is my heel will be down every time I hit a note and I'll quickly swell in. So you won't have any of the attack of the pit. It'll just be like notes just bloom out of nowhere. And so if you watch that view, I'm just going to be doing this a lot and timing it like pick swell, pick swell. And yeah, I'll use some slide and it'll be real trippy and like, it'd be like a daydream you can't get out of. Before we go to record time, uh, just a few other things to mention. Ernie Ball has active volume pedals, so a lot of times you get into situations where fully passive is not the best thing for your rig, and it just depends on the rig. So they make a version that has a buffer in it. Um, the tuner output, you know, is is active as well. This one's still passive. Uh, so there's that. This actually has gain on it. There are. Stereo volumes, boss, these are really great. I've used these on some boards, um, the FV30L. So you can do left, right in stereo if you run a stereo rig. 
Um, there's also like super tiny ones that like I can't even fathom using because my feet are so big. And there are devices that do volume and wah in one. I personally hate them all. Um, I know I've never been so outspoken, but I just want to say I don't like that. I'm not a fan. And I don't know why I'm not a fan except that I just think that it's like not good. And <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And then last, uh, Boost. This is a really cool unit by Vertex. So it is a really powerful volume boost circuit. So think preamp booster, but you can plug in an expression and it becomes an active volume pedal with a ton of clean gain that goes way beyond what you had. Meaning if you use certain small amps or certain rigs or certain drive pedals you love, put this in front and you can actually slam into them with an expression pedal plugged in and like have full control over a ton of extra gain clean going into your drives or amps. Yeah, I think that's good. I think, I think that, you know, maybe this was good. Let's go to record time. Today's record time comes to us from the dumpster fire of 2020. It is Biba Doobie's Fake It Flowers. Really cool record. Uh, one of my favorite of last year for sure. It has little sprinkles of The Cure, Tori Amos, Nirvana, Cranberries, a little, little of that Phoebe Bridgers vibe. You know, it's a mix. It's a cocktail of things. It's really good. Check it out. Her guitar playing is really great. Great guitar tones, really simple parts that fit the song well. Good songwriting, good production too. So check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you don't like it, it's fine. You know, you're probably still a good person, I guess. Thanks so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, hit like, subscribe to the channel, please, 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 and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. And in the comments below, let me know when you first got a volume pedal, which one you use, and how do you use a volume pedal? Because I wanna know. I have an inquisitive mind. Bye-bye.